<laughs> right, my coffee love affair started in 2013 after reading the London Coffee Guide in a bookshop. I took a peek at the book. I could barely recognize any of the cafes at that time. And at that time, I just wanted to know which was the best cafe in London, and that happened to be caffeine. I went to the cafe the following week, and that became a life-changing experience. Before I took my coffee seriously, I was mainly drinking espressos for chain coffee shops. I just wanted the caffeine hit. Now, espressos, they are very efficient beverages. They are small in volume, quick to drink, often bitter, sour. The stronger, the better. That's what I thought. So when I was about to go to caffeine, I did not have very high expectations. At caffeine, I ordered my usual double espresso. I took a sip, and a smile literally broke out from my face. It was the first time that I actually enjoyed my espresso. The coffee was complex, sweet, had a rounded mouthfeel, and was not flat and running. However, these expectations were short-lived. As I returned back to Oxford, I went to the one cafe, a few more, and a lot more. And my conclusion was, the coffee was just not as good. I wanted better, and I wanted more. And I can tell you, once you start drinking good coffee, there's no turning back. So it was just too inconvenient for me to just go back down to London just to have coffee. So I decided that it was time for me to start to learn how to brew my own coffee. And for what I gathered was, the first step was to get really good coffee. But at that time, I did not know where to go, so I asked around. Monmouth coffee was highly suggested by my friends who had stayed in the UK for a while. And it was actually here where I bought my first bag of coffee for serious home brewing. I started off with the famous espresso blend. But the problem was, I had no equipment yet. So I went online and typed the easiest ways to make good coffee. And I actually became more confused at that time because there are so many instructions and a lot of weird brewing coffee equipment. They came in different shapes and sizes. Some look like lab apparatus and others look like weapons. <laughs> so I tried to find out, okay, where do I need to get to start? And voila, I thought, these are the things that I actually need to start um, making good coffee. I needed a thermometer, I needed a grinder, I needed a scale, I needed a pour of a kettle, not just a normal kettle, and a coffee maker of my choice. Whatever happened to a hot jug of water and two tablespoons of coffee, that's what I thought. <laughs> Funny thing is, after a number of years, I actually owned some of this weird brewing uh, equipment. So from the left, the French press, the Aero press, the V60, the Kalida, and the Chemex. And all of these brewers are unique in their own ways in terms of the recipes, the techniques, and desired taste outcomes which you want. So every morning, I have a lot of choices on how I make my coffee. <laughs> but how do you begin to start appreciating and tasting coffee? It might be a very difficult thing to have your coffee without milk and sugar. But once you start having your coffee black, some things begin to change, and you just might start exploring different types of coffees. Like the slide here, these are my 2015 coffees. As you try to start different, uh, having a coffee black, you begin to identify different flavors in your coffee. And realize that not all coffee tastes the same. You begin to identify differences between light, medium, and dark rolls. I think that's the most fascinating aspect of tasting coffee. But how do you describe the coffee you're tasting? So I refer to the Specialty Coffee Association of America, Coffee Flavor Tasters Bill. And here you have 110 flavor, texture, and aroma attributes present in coffee. So if I have a bag of Brazilian coffee, I might go, oh, this coffee is quite creamy, and I'm getting chocolate and nuts from this coffee, as an example. But how do you taste coffee objectively, given that there's so many variables in place, such as your water temperature, your grind settings, and the type of coffee you use? One way to overcome this is through cupping, which involves smelling the coffee, like what my friends are doing here, and tasting the coffee as well. And to taste the coffee, we do not just drink the coffee. We slurp, and we slurp really, really loudly, so that it envelopes our mouth and tongue very quickly, like this. <laughs> but tasting coffee did come with challenges, especially for me. And for me, the biggest problem was being a Bruneian. <laughs> and having a Bruneian palate, with my love of fried food and lack of eating exotic fruits while I was growing up, like berries, which is present in coffee, I found it very challenging uh, when I was trying to learn to taste coffee as a novice. 
But what kind of question comes up to my mind when I'm tasting coffee? A number of things, actually. I might ask, is this coffee fruity? Is it nutty? Does it have chocolate? Does it have an aftertaste? Does it linger? Is it full? Is it creamy? So these are some of the things that I ask myself. And once you start asking these questions, you start to become more conscious of things. You start to become more conscious of the smell and taste. And I gradually became more attuned to what I'm trying to taste and I always try to make a mental note if it's something I never tried before. Such as these fruits here, the blood orange, the kumquat, gooseberry and figs, which are present in coffee. And tasting coffee has been a very difficult journey and it's often very, very complex for me. By now, you can tell that I'm really into my coffee and I like to point out that you can really get started too. So first thing is, try out different specialty cafes when you're abroad. Ask me some suggestions. It's an eye-opener. Look what happened to me. Second thing is, always buy fresh coffee. Check for the roast days so that you know that it's fresh. And I think Bruna has come a really long way in the coffee and cafe scene. From our coffee teams, cafes, and a growing number of home brewers like myself. But what's the future like in Brunei? This is just good enough right here. I think we can do better. And I'm talking about the World Cup of Coffee held every year called the World Barista Championships. Currently, you have national championships happening in ASEAN countries, and Myanmar and Cambodia started theirs in 2014. But where is Brunei? <laughs> I hope this talk inspires the future generation and you tonight, and hopefully we see a Brunei competing in the World Barista Championships. Thank you.